and this is what it's going to look like. And this is exactly how the Instron tester is going to um, save the data for us. We're going to have time and we're doing data acquisitions every uh, tenth of a second. Um, the extension data here is the extension as measured on the crosshead. So um, this is often called the um, calculated calculated deflection. Uh, I don't really like that word as much as saying that it's just the um, instron data. It's the strain strain. Uh, it's the deflection from the actual instron crosshead. And um, the load is uh, from that load cell that's actually built into the instron and your strain gauge data. And we're going to go into strain gauges uh, a little bit more next week. So, um, but the instron actually just spits out your strain. It, it does the, um, the calculations for you. It converts the, the change in resistance um, of the Wheatstone bridge and um, converts it into strain for us. So this one, you don't have to do any calculation on, um, but this one you do, okay? And then this is your thickness, one millimeter thick piece of aluminum. It has a gauge length of 57 and a width of 12.5. And this is the width in the um, dog bone region. <clears throat> so, there is a table here, and you just need to fill in this table with the values. Um, and uh, the sample plots, I'd like for you to show your work. Um, I think if you just put your sample plots right here it, within the spreadsheet, instead of creating a new um, worksheet for that, it's probably easier for me to grade it if you just put them all right in here. And I'll show you. Um, I'll show you what my data looked like from uh, after I worked with it. So first thing I did is I just created a, a plot here of the load versus extension. So this is the Instron data. The Instron data is um, the crosshead uh, deflection. And uh, don't do as I do, which is label. So put your axes uh, load and include units and deflection and include units in your uh, axes. Um, and uh, then we can then get the, the stress versus strain plot um, by adding additional columns here. And... Um, the other thing that you might have to do is uh, modify it um, by shifting it because I want to make sure that your data crosses at the origin. So I zoomed in on my um, area near zero, 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 and found that there was a offset. Um, and uh, to determine the offset, I, I took the um, uh, linear, I took a, a trend line of that area, and then I set, I took that equation that was generated from that, from that um, equation, I took that and I set y equal to zero, and I solved for x. And by doing that, it um, spits out what my offset um, should be. So, I actually need to add 0 0.00697 to all of my um, strain, I'm sorry, uh, uh, deflection data um, to, uh, to do that. And so that, that's what I did here where I added an extra row and, um, and that way the data now starts right at the origin. <clears throat> now, I'm not sure if if uh, if the data that you have, um, normally 
you would you would want to uh, zero out the instron right when you right when you're starting with with um, zero load. So you don't want to have any preload, um, but you also don't want to have any slack in the in the mechanics uh, when you first start the test. Okay, so um, that's the first thing that I did. Um, then what I did was I multiplied, I divided by the cross-sectional area and the cross, the gauge cross-section, um, I put in units of meters because, um, I'm, uh, my load is in Newtons and I want, um, Pascals for my stress. So, um, when I take the load in newtons divided by the cro original cross-sectional area, um, I get uh, pascals. And then what I did is I just divided it by a million here to um, give me mega pascals. Uh, mega is a million, you know, pascals. So that gives me units of megapascals then i can then i can plot plot that out <clears throat> um so now i need to start um getting some of the data that i need to fill in this graph this this table and the the instron data uh i added a a, a column here and put a label for instron and this is all the the um, orange data and then the strain gauge data is in green okay and so um i like to start from left to right <laughs> so i should probably rearrange this but calculating the elastic modulus is is the first thing to do because you're in the um, linear region there first so to do that, you have to take a um, the uh, trend line in the linear region. Um, so I, I just added an extra plot here, zoomed in on this region where I knew it's linear. Um, the question is, is when do you uh, stop um, the data? Where do you stop analyzing the data? And uh, this is, going to require you to sort of make um, kind of a a determination mm, I mean it's a little it's a little bit nonlinear initially and it's a little bit nonlinear uh, at the top here so if if you if you add add the same amount of nonlinearity on both sides then you're going to get a pretty um, accurate um, slope that follows follows this region here you can see actually i i should have maybe um maybe not even include the first uh few data points here disregard these ones and uh so that that it overlaps this region a little bit better <clears throat> um but you do have to make sure that your the plot that you create actually um is only highlights the cells within that linear region. You can't just you can't just double click on the the axes and and change the the range of the axes. You actually have to select the data, just the data that you want to analyze to calculate the um, trend line. Okay, and um, so once you have that trend line, you can you can pluck the equation off because when you when you uh, look at that, let me just do it here. Um, when you right click on the data, you can add trend line. So you, you let me just do it again here. Um, this is now your data line. You right click on it and you select this thing called add trend line, add trend line. Um, then after you've added the trend line, you have to click on that trend line again and you have to make sure that you display the equation on the chart 
because by default it's not. Uh, you also, of course, have to make sure that you're adding a linear trend line. Um, here's your equation that it displays on the chart. And um, from here, you can get your elastic modulus because this is just the equation y is equal to mx plus b, where um, m is the slope of the line, which is the elastic modulus. So uh, 19 gigapascals. It's uh, 19,000 megapascals or 19 gigapascals. And you can see that's what we have in our table right here, right? Um, so let's calculate the yield strength. Now, we're moving left to right. Uh, that means we have to draw a new line here that has our offset of 0 0.002. So to, to create that line, um, once you've created that line, you can then you can then identify where your actual stress strain crosses that um, yield offset, and where it crosses is the yield point. So I'm just jumping ahead. So um, let's let's uh, actually create this line here. So I just put some arbitrary x data points here where I separated them by. 0 0.005 and you can select the you can just type in the first two and then go down here to the lower right here in corner and just drag it down and it's going to autofill to create your first column of data um, but since we want to um, use data that has a 0 0.002 offset I just um, you know added 0 0.002 to it. I suppose you could have just started out by going starting from 0 0.002 and then adding 0 0.005 to each one. So uh, either way, uh, this is the column of data that you want to plot with your y data, which is coming from our equation here. Um, and that is the equation here, 19,105 times uh, a, B, <clears throat> 20. Um, yeah, it's actually A, C. Um, but so you can see I'm plotting the this versus this, and that is uh, this orange orange plot here right so um, then what I've done is I go back into my um, selection of original data and I've just um, added more more data points here uh, more data points so I can I can actually see then uh, where that line where that line crossed and um, and then what I did is I, uh, let me just kind of zoom in on it a little bit more. <clears throat> I, I put in a label for where that crossing point is occurring. And so I just, uh, to do that, you just click on, click on the data point that you want. I'm just going to do it on this one here click once and then click again and then right click we have to make sure it doesn't shift on you you right click you got to be really precise with your mouse and you want to um add a data label and that adds the data label but by default it, it only adds the um the y um information so if you right click on it again, you can, you can edit uh, the label, right click, um, format data point. I'm sorry, format data label. 
you format data label and add your X value to it as well. Because it's your X value, which is what you're interested in. That's your, uh, your yield point. Okay, so that point has an X value of 0 0.029, but that's not the point that we're interested in. I was just doing that for demonstration purposes. This is the data point that you're interested in, which is the crossover of the two. All right, and, and then I put 0 0.027. That's what I typed into my table uh, for the strain at the... Um, yield point and the 521 is the x label from that uh from that label okay any questions on that for calculating the elastic modulus and the yield strength okay awesome so then um the next step will be to uh calculate the tensile strength which is also called the maximum uh, tensile strength. And that then requires us to look at the, um, the full plot again. So you can go back up to um, this one here. Um, I would guess that the maximum strength is somewhere in this region right here. Um, but the easiest way to determine that is to use the equation called max. Um, so I just chose, I just typed in max G colon G, which is going to take the entire, um, column G data. And it looks like the max is at 738, which is what I typed into my table. Um, where right here. Oh, oh, it's not. Hmm. Oh yeah. 738 right there max stress okay and the um the, the strain at max stress so what is the strain at max stress well there's two ways you can go about this you can go you can just 738 and go into your data and you can scroll all the way down through the 2000 lines uh and look for column e that has 738 no column g has 738. Let's see how quickly we can do this. Uh, it's kind of hard because it jumps all over the place. It's kind of hard to find out where that is. So I would say if you're looking for efficiency, because we're all engineers, um, you can use an equation here called match, a formula called match in Excel. And all that's doing is it's going to search for that value of 738 and it's going to it's going to spit out the row number uh, for that that's associated with that value. And then once we know the row number, we can then easily uh, get the, the the strain value. So to use the match equation or match function, just type match. Um, and the lookup value is going to be R10, right? That's lookup value. And the lookup array is uh, column, uh, I think it's column G. So G colon G. And then we have three options here. We can less than, exact match, or greater than. Well, um, we should be able to get the exact match. So uh, as long as we um, typed in this exactly, so we can use zero um, for that index. And then wrap it up with a close parenthesis and hit enter, add. So two zero, Two seven is the row number where seven thirty eight newton uh, newtons uh, newton per meter squared or I'm sorry megapascals is and so then the since strain is located in column H we just type H uh, 
two zero two seven because we want to get the that row column and row and so the strain is going to be 0.2365 and that is what i put in my table right here matter of fact i i just instead of coming in here and typing that value i i just like put an equal sign here went to the worksheet clicked on the cell and then hit enter and it um, brings that value over to this worksheet <clears throat> all right cool so um any questions on getting the the strain at max max stress All right, cool. So then uh, the next point is uh, strain at failure. And for that one, I just chose the um, the last data point because this is pretty much a vertical line. So um, I just selected that bottom point there. And then, uh, wait, the very bottom point. And then I right clicked and added a um, data label. Um, but since I already created it, it doesn't allow me to do it again. So yeah, right click, add data label. And then I right clicked on it again. Oops, right clicked on it again. And then um, I can format the data label and add the x value and then i have both uh, the strain at failure and the uh which is what i'm interested in uh is the strain at failure so it looks like it's going to be at two six four five um and this one this is one where i just typed it in i just went over here and i just typed in uh two six four five Okay, so that that completes the analysis of the um, the uh, Instron uh, data. The, I'm sorry, the uh, the the strain that's calculated from the Instron crosshead uh, deflection. Okay, then uh, the green is the strain gauge data, and um, so again we have to get the elastic modulus. Um, so that would be the slope. So I went over here and I first I just plotted the the raw data um, just to see whether what it what it looks like. And who can tell me um, like this data is all garbage out here. So what's happening when it um, when it drops abruptly here? What's happening in my test? that the uh, strain gauge delaminated came off yes yes is exactly what happened so uh uh we, we take great care to um prepare the surfaces so that they're very clean and uh we get a very uh very good bond between the specimen and the strain gauge so the the idea is to try to get this plot to go out as far as you can um but at some point you're just going to have to disregard the data and that's what we've done we've um, disregarded all the data beyond that point there um and so uh do as i say which is make sure that you add labels here for your axes which i didn't do uh, but please do that um so then you can uh make this yield offset table again like i did in the previous one uh, after you've calculated what the um, what the trend line equation is, which I've generated here based on the linear region of the stress strain data. Again, put your axes here. Um, once you have the equation, you can create your data for your orange offset line. And unfortunately, um, we weren't able to uh, maintain the integrity of the strain gauge to identify the yield point. 
Um, so what you'll need to do here is um, add an imaginary extension here to where you would estimate the yield point is occurring. And so that's what I did with this uh, label right here. Um, but what is uh, very um, unnerving, which I don't know what the heck happened here with my data, but I have a um, elastic modulus, I'm sorry, elastic modulus of 350 gigapascals. Um, so which one do you, which one do you believe it is like this one or 350? Well, I guess I kind of already gave it away, but this is like more like uh, ceramics or uh, very stiff, uh, like tungsten, uh, somewhere around there. So uh, let's see how close your, your two values are uh, with the data that you have. And um, then these other values are collected using the same process that we did with the Instron data. So I'm not going to go over that again. But um, one of the questions has to do with the strain at max stress, but I didn't have enough data to go out that far to be able to calculate that. So I just put NA, can't do <clears throat> for that one. We'll see where yours is. Um, and also I didn't even bother, but the strain at failure, obviously that wouldn't be possible to measure with your strain gauge. Um, so that pretty much sums up the, the uh, 